Mr. President, I'd like to add to the remarks I made just a moment ago on uh, climate change to respond to some statements that have been made recently on the Senate floor uh, on this subject. Uh, as those of us who are advocates in the cause of doing something about climate change know, the polluters and their advocates have an advantage. They only have to create doubt. They only have to create debate in order to create delay and allow the polluters to continue making money uh, at the expense of the rest of us. Now, that means that the arguments, frankly, don't have to be true. They just have to be made. Uh, then they can say that there's still debate then they can say that there's still controversy, both of which are self-fulfilling prophecies. But they're not real. And some of what's been said is pretty flagrant. One of the lead Senate deniers came to the floor the other day to challenge President Obama. Uh, President Obama said in his uh, State of the Union address that um, the fact is, the 12 hottest years on record have all come in the last 15. Heat waves, droughts, wildfires, floods, all are now more frequent and more intense. Uh, my denier colleague quoted him, and to quote my colleague, quote, he said, referring to the president, the president said, Yes, it's true that no single event makes a trend, but the fact is that the 12 hottest years on record have all come in the last 15. That is just flat wrong, said the denier. So why don't we just take a look and see where the president got his information so we can put this into some perspective. The president got his information from NASA. Now, maybe people in this body are more capable than NASA dealing with scientific things, but when you consider that NASA has put an explorer on the surface of Mars, I think they're entitled to some credence about uh, basic science. And they agree. In fact, Reto Rudy, a program manager at the Goddard Institute, has laid out the actual years. Uh, some of these are statistical ties because they're equally hot. The number one and two hottest years, according to them, are 2010, 2005. The number three to eight hottest years are 2007, 1998, 2002, 2003, 2006, and 2009. The ninth through twelfth hottest years recorded are 2012, 2011, 2001, and 2004. If you go to the thirteenth year, it's 2008. The 14th and the 15th are 1997 and 1995. All of the 15 hottest years on record are 1995 and thereafter. The top 12 all have happened 1998 and thereafter. And it's not just NASA's data set that confirms this. Uh, NOAA also looks at the same information. They come at it a little bit differently, and they, they do have a difference. I'll concede that. NOAA considers 2012 to be the 10th warmest year on record instead of the ninth. That's the difference between NASA and NOAA. And we're talking about records going back to 1880. So it's a broad data set. Um, if you look at NOAA's data, it actually shows that 14 of the past 15 years were the hottest on record. Uh, ditto the National Center for Atmospheric Research. And of course, as many of us know in uh, political life, there's a group out there called PolitiFact that takes a look at claims that are made in the public debate in politics, and they assign them true to pants on fire. They looked at the president's claim that the 12 hottest years on record have come in the last 15 years. They gave the president a true. Indeed, they said, and I quote, Obama was actually overcautious in his statement, so we rate his statement true. So we have one denier senator against NASA, against PolitiFact, against NOAA, and against the National Center for Atmospheric Research. Uh, I think it's pretty clear who has the facts on their side. 
The other statement that was made uh, is, and I'll quote, I don't think that anyone disagrees with the fact that we actually are in a cold period that started about nine years ago. Let's look at the facts. This is the temperature data. The green represents the actual data. The red line is a statistically derived mean of all that information. It is something that is done mathematically. It's not amenable to argument. It's not amenable to debate. You can do it using different methods, but it's clear from that data set that we are, in fact, in a warming period, not a cooling period. So how do you get to say that in nine years we're in a cooling period? Well, if you go back a few years here, you see there are some high points. And if you pick just those high points, and then you go forward nine years, you can draw a graph that goes down. But you have to be very careful how you pick your points to create that illusion. You can actually do it if you want repeatedly in the data. You could pick this point and have it go down. You could pick this point and have it go down. You could pick this point and have it go down. And this, and this. Each one of those points you could say, well, during this period was actually a cold period. It was actually a cooling period. But when you look at the actual information, and when you look at the statistically driven mean that cuts through all the data, it's pretty clear that to try to look at it this way is playing tricks with the data. It's playing games and trying to fool people. It's twisting and distorting the data. I think that that's less than honest uh, application of these facts. Um, so if that's the sort of trick, the sort of misleading statistical trick that the polluters and their advocates have to resort to, I think that's just another reminder that it really is time for us to wake up and get to work on this. There is no credible scientific debate over what carbon pollution is doing to our atmosphere and our oceans, and it's pretty darn clear that it's warming and warming pretty fast. So I appreciate the opportunity to clarify this and uh, we'll yield the floor and note the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Alexander. Senator from Rhode Island. Mr. President, may I ask that the quorum call be lifted? Without objection. May I ask unanimous consent that the PolitiFact that I referred to in my last set of remarks be uh, added uh, to the record at the end of my remarks as an exhibit? Without objection. Thank you very much. I yield the floor and note the absence of quorum.